What up, guys? It's just I here. Today we're reading Julian's <laughs> Julian Secret Egg, Chapter Three. Let's begin. Chapter Three. We meet the Mighty One. When we went to all of Gloria's house and had lunch afterwards, we started patrolling, riding our bikes around. It seemed like criminals were staying away from us. By the middle of the afternoon, it was really hot and we were tired. Around four o'clock, we decided to patrol supermarkets. We thought some criminal might go there to get food and take it back to his hideout. Everything was normal in the first three supermarkets. Kids crying, mothers and dads pushing shopping carts around, kids trying to ride the carts like scooters, people knocking over, hun hundreds of cans of tuna fish, kids, dem kids demanding a certain kind of candy advertised on TV. The fourth supermarket was one I'd never been to before. We patrolled the same way we had patrolled the others, checking the parking lot first, looking for gums in the baskets of back seats of cars, dead bodies, things like that. No luck. We stopped and looked at a dog inside a car. Isn't he cute, Gloria said. She wants a dog, even more than Huey and I do. She touched the window glass, and the dog tried to sniff her hand. Then then he looked at her with very, very hard, with big brown eyes, and whined, and panted a little, and panted a little more. He put his big, sh shaky paws against the window. The woman came up behind us. It's a crime, she said. You weren't doing anything, Huey said. Not you, the woman said. The car, the dog, the windows, it's a crime. She pushed by us and went toward the store. What's a crime? Huey said. We have to investigate, I said. Here, Pooch, Gloria called and put her hand against the window. But the dog didn't jump up again. He just looked at Gloria and whined and dropped his head around against the seat. That dog is sick, Gloria said. It must be really hot in the car, Huey said. I wonder how long it's been there, I said. He needs to get out, Gloria said. The sun has made, made the car like an oven. That's what the crime is. He can't get out. We have to tell the person who owns the car. Let's get the license number, I said. We went around to the front of the car to find the license plate. Gloria wrote it down. Mighty one. When we went into the store and asked for the manager, a small man came down from the high booth where the money and receipt treat receipts or, or receipts are kept. Sorry. I'm the manager, he said. What can I do for you? It's about a dog, he said. The dog was stuck in the car. The windows are closed and he looks sick. He probably is sick, the manager said. He could he could even die on a day like today if he's left there too long. Here's the license number, Gloria said. She showed him her notebook. Mighty one, said the manager. Hmm. He climbed into his booth and used the microphone. Will the car owner of the license plate, Mighty One, come to the manager's office, he said. Then he climbed down from the booth and stood with us, and we waited to see who would answer his call. A man came towards us. He was the biggest man I ever saw. He must have been practically seven feet tall. He had two huge bags of groceries, and he was balancing that he was balancing on his shoulders. He was wearing shorts and a t-shirt that said Rambo. He had muscles every every place on his body that you could have a muscle. He looked mean. I pictured myself getting smashed. I pictured Dad standing by my bed afterward, shaking his head sadly and saying, Julian, you went too far. Huey looked from the man's toes up to his head and back down again three times and whispered to the store manager, When he gets here, when when he gets here, why don't you talk? The manager smiled. You children just speak up. He said, You can do it. I'll do it, Gloria said. I love dogs. Just then, Mighty One came, came to a stop, practically on top of us, and a big sky, as a big skyscraper. He looked at the manager. So what did you call me for? He asked. Gloria looked up at him. You have a dog, she asked. So what? Mighty One said. It's too hot to leave him in the car with the windows rolled up. He, he could die, Gloria said. Mighty One glared at her. Then he glared at the manager. He called me over to let three little kids mess, mess in my business. Children are right, the manager said. Look, said Mighty One, pointing his finger down in the manager's nose. When I brought that dog, they told me he was a strong, healthy dog. They didn't say anything about car windows. That dog is tough. He can take it. I hoped Gloria would say something more, but when I looked around, Gloria was gone. Mighty One stuck in his chin, stuck his chin out. Then he, then he stuck it back in so he could look down and see us. Didn't anybody ever tell you kids should just mind their own business till they grow up? Especially your girlfriend. She's not my girlfriend, I said. She's my friend. I won't let anybody say that I have a girlfriend. Not even a huge, mean man who's seven feet tall. Friend or girlfriend, Mighty One said. Makes no difference. You tell her. And then and then we all saw that Gloria was back. You, Mighty One Ward. 
Gloria smiled, her prettiest smile. Excuse me, she said. I was checking your car. Your dog just fainted. Whitey One's mouth hung open, like the door of, of a cave. Crumble, Crumble's fainted, he said. He dropped all his groceries, ran for the door. Stuff rolled out the grocery sacks, a dozen raw hide fake dog bones, 35 cans of dog food, a ball with a bell inside, five boxes of Wheaties, breakfast of champions, a book called How to Be a He-Man, and a magazine with an article that said, 79 exercises for your toes. The manager started picking up things, and we helped him. Suddenly, the manager got a huge grin on his face, just the kind Huey gets. He picked up a book from his from the magazine rack and stuck it in, stuck it one of in one of the grocery sacks under the dog food cans. Head was how to take care of your dog. Sometimes I have to do mischievous things, he said. I can't help myself. Now we need to take some water out to Crumbles, he said. So we went to the back of the store, put water in a bucket, and took it out to the parking lot. Crumbles was lying on the ground in the shade. Mighty One was kneeling next to him, rubbing the dog's neck. We brought some water, the manager said. Mighty One looked up. Thank you, he said. The man manager dunked Crumbles' head into the bucket of water. Then he held Crumbles' mouth open and poured some water into it. Crumbles blinked. Crumbles, you're all right. You're going to be fine, aren't you? Mighty One said. Crumbles made a, a little noise, something like a sigh. Oh, my sweet, adorable Crumbles, he said. Said Mighty One and kissed him on the nose. Hope you guys enjoyed chapter three. If you guys did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next video. Bye!